Mr. John Zhang, Security Product Development from Citic Telecom CPC, will talk about advanced malware that can cripple your enterprise networks and also how you can fence off against them. Now, before I pass the time to our speakers, I just want to highlight that today's session will be recorded for internal review purpose and also to be uploaded to social media. We will send out the links to you once that is done. Also, during the webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we will answer them to our best ability at the end of the presentations. So without further ado, I will pass the time over to our first speaker. Over to you, Chin Ping. Hey, thank you, Kam Singh. Hi, everyone. Uh, let's just, I, hope, I hope you can see me. Um, yeah, I just turned on my video. We just, uh, okay. And then it, shout out if you can't see my slides. There you go. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, securing your business itself. Uh, like Kam Singh mentioned, um, specifically email. Uh, I think security itself is a very, very wide topic. Um, and uh, uh, it's not, not about single silos uh, of technology anymore. And, and if you believe the, the old adage, right, it's security for um, cyber security, I should say. Uh, it's, it's not just about technology, it's also about people and process. So hopefully, you know, by talking about email itself, it's uh, kind of uh, it, it sets a very good stage for us to understand, you know, how uh, security uh, can be chained together, uh, various technologies itself, and how people plays a part, process plays a part. And I'm very glad that uh, you know today's session uh, we are joined. Uh, well, we are invited by our partners, uh, Cedric Telecom uh, CPC, uh, to to share this part. So while Fortinet provides the, the technology itself. Um, our partners like uh, our MSSP partners like Cedric Telecom CPC provides the, the people, the process, right, to um, make security work for you and for your business. Right. So uh, just very quickly, as, as Kam Singh mentioned just now, right, in the beginning, uh, it's getting uh, more and more complicated. And if uh, uh, just two hours ago, you know, I was in a um, uh, again a, a webinar uh, for for Malaysia Malaysia government a, a panel discussion, and we were talking about zero trust. And at the time, we were, we were just just saying right uh, uh, when when uh, the concept used to be a, a mode kind of thing, right? You you protect the perimeter and and whatever is inside is is good. But today, what is your network? Uh, where is your network, right? So this. This diagram uh, um, perfectly says it all. Today, uh, the enterprise network is kind of everywhere. You have edges everywhere. Uh, is there really a perimeter that you can you can control? I think it's kind of difficult, right? So we have uh, remote users. Uh, people always say, you know, they work on the, the on the cap, work on the train. So your network can be there. There is your campus, your HQ edge, your branch edges, the home. Uh, those those of you in the manufacturing uh, uh, or, or processes, uh, OT itself is an edge, right? And that, that's where the devices users come in, and then of course where your 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 uh, data is stored, and where your your digital business is run, which is uh, your data center, private, public cloud access itself. And one of the things will be the email, which I'll talk about later. Why is it so? Uh, why has this explosion of edges right increased the risk? Well, we have the good guys and there's also the bad guys, right? They, they obviously have uh, also advanced in terms of their technologies. And... Um, uh, Chimping, uh, Chimping, sorry to interrupt, but uh, can you share your slides? We can't see the slides. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. I hope it comes through now. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, so like I said, um, while we advance uh, our uh, technologies, right, uh, the cyber criminal advances theirs as well. Um, they've got they've gotten sophisticated, and um, you can talk about you know AI and, and and what have you, right? Increasing the speed, they've also increasing they've also increased the speed and uh, the complexity, uh, which means that the cyber defense 
has to be uh, a lot more effective. And uh, from Fortinet's perspective, this is where we come together to put um, various solutions or technologies together into a framework. Uh, we call it the Fortinet security fabric uh, that is broad, integrated and automated, broad in the sense that we cover uh, many attack surfaces and they are not silos, right? They are out of the box integrated with one another so that we can automate the response, right? So this is where the technology comes from. So to, to put this uh, circle into uh, 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 pillars, okay? So we are talking about um, security-driven networking, where we'll, previously we think of network as one and then security on top of it. Hey, I think we need to look at things differently, integrate both together, and that's where uh, we are coming from, where we've integrated next-gen firewall with uh, 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 your networking for the WAN, LAN, DC, LAN, and, and even the cloud, right? Uh, zero trust access, uh, and then moving everything to the, uh, well, adaptively helping uh, our users move to the cloud uh, from a networking platform and applications perspective. And lastly, when you've got all these things, right, how you uh, operate uh, your, your network from a security point of view and from a networking point of view, right? So uh, a platform approach. So for today's session, I'm just going to talk about email security, but uh, at the end of it, I'm just going to help chain up things together, right? Where um, I hope you, you guys are familiar with 40 gate and the next gen firewall. We are partnering with uh, City uh, Telecom to offer SD-WAN solutions as well and service. Uh, and um, I'm just going to talk a little bit at length on uh, what the 40 mil secure email gateway uh, is what it what it does uh, problems it solves what threat it mitigates right, and how it integrates its uh, sandbox and then tying them all up uh, in, in the final slide okay so uh, future of email security actually it goes beyond email right so why why do we say that and what's the trend behind right um, I think email is uh, has been recognized like, as a, a primary threat vector. Um, social engineering uh, is something that uh, you, you, uh, email kind of like makes it, it, it convenient, right, for the attackers to come in. There's also phishing and then there's also uh, a business email compromise. The numbers speak for themselves. Um, it's not just a primary threat vector, the threat vector being that, uh, you know, attackers like to use it to um, try to breach organizations uh, networks. It is also, I think, arguably a very successful one as well, right? So they've been successful uh, making use of emails to uh, penetrate um, organizations. And there's also, that's the threat part, right? But the other part of things is that, uh, you know, we, we see a, you know, we can say a mega trend where people are moving away from on-premises. And one of the first things that move, uh, I, I can say, is emails, right? So get rid of the, email servers on-prem, move it to the cloud, and then, hey, the cloud as provider is going to tell you that includes um, security as well. Right? So majority, as you can see here from the numbers, they are moving, and many are adopting whatever the cloud uh, vendors are giving uh, in terms of security. But really, how effective are they? Right? These built-in uh, security solutions. Uh, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, you know, you're the, depending on how you look at it, right, the studies have shown, right, that uh, the solutions or the security solutions provided by all these uh, cloud providers uh, fall short of expectations, right. So our recommendation really is that you know uh, go beyond that, uh, look at uh, security solutions on its own for your email itself, for the very fact that. Uh, it is the number one threat vector and it has been a very successful one, right, in that sense. So, 40 next response to that is the uh, 40 mil. Um, it, it provides advanced threat protection uh, against email born uh, attacks, right? Uh, pro I'll talk about the efficacy and all that in a, in a later while as well. Um, but more importantly, it is part of that security fabric that I talked about that is brought uh, integrated and uh, automated. Okay, so what is the uh, 40 mail secure email gateway? If you look at uh, mitigating 
well, inner security like, right, and how to mitigate it. Right? I would like to look at it from that, that point of view, right? Uh, uh, mitigating threats coming from emails, right? And uh, 40 mil itself covers uh, all four aspects here, right? Known threats, suspicious, right? So don't know yes or no, yeah? and then the unknown type of things, uh, especially uh, zero days, right? And then uh, business email compromise, right? So just this uh, multi-layer uh, defense you can see here actually covers four different um, uh, threats or, or that you can mitigate with uh, 40 mil, right? Just uh, the first one um, I, I mentioned uh, uh, about uh, um, social engineering, uh, phishing attacks and all that, right? So that's the first thing that you're going to be able to uh, defend against, right? Uh, so uh, the solution itself includes, you know, things like the, the usual stuff that you see, anti-spam, fish, anti-fish, gray meals and all that, right? Being able to deal with these kind of things at a, at a large scale, right? And, and actually, if you look at it, right, it's not just about known, right, or certain known, known strings or whatever, whatever you have, right? But um, when it comes to uh, uh, contents-based kind of uh, threats, right, it is uh, about known strings, suspicious-looking ones, and then even unknown ones, right? Uh, so you don't know what the email is, uh, is supposed to do. You know that what how what uh, mechanisms are there, like, right? To to uh, mitigate against these things, and I would say uh, behavior analysis and uh, click protection kind of thing, right? To protect against uh, phishing emails. Uh, the second one is the uh, second threat uh, that we, we would be able to mitigate is uh, attachments, right? Uh, uh, I think suffice to say we are all very familiar with you know emails coming in with attachments and all that. But how sure are we that the uh, attachments are safe? Right? Even a simple word document or a simple uh, PDF, right, can have embedded uh, a malware that uh, normal users will not know, right? And and the I, I would think the the normal response right when you see an email is to open it. Oh, there's a there's a there's a, an attachment, click and open it, and voila, you may have uh, just been um, uh, well compromised, right, by an unknown user. So uh, obviously, uh, um, things like antivirus and, and all that uh, pro protects you, gives you some kind of protection, but uh, we also want to recognize the fact that there will be unknown uh, malware out there, zero days and all that, and if you are one of the first well, you may not have a signature to, to protect you. And that's where we uh, include um, uh, advanced threat protection, right? The sandboxing techniques and all that to uh, uh, inspect your file. Or if uh, you may even want to extract uh, the active component, right? Within all these uh, uh, documents, uh, Right, and you just present the, the user document uh, to your to the users without the embedded macros or scripts. Right, so that's a, a second mechanism uh, that 40 mil uh, is able to protect or defend against. The third one is uh, URL. Right, um, how many times have we uh, received emails right, and say click this, click that, and uh, how often are we tempted to? Just click on it, right? I think there's so many. You 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 just in a company of one hundred, you just need one person to click on it, and there you go. You would be uh, compromised, right? So, what are the mechanisms that we have there uh, to to prevent such a an incident from happening? Obviously, there's the URL filtering. So, be able to ins inspect whatever is in the content. Is there a uh, uh, unwanted link? You could you can say, right? or a malicious link that you want to uh, remove, right? Or if it's unknown, say it's a new domain that is not, not even classified. So is it really something that you will allow your users to click? That's where you, you know, put it through a, a sandbox to run it, test it. Maybe the link uh, uh, end up, you know, uh, downloading a file into your laptop, you, you never know, right? So, so that's uh, one another mechanism that you do. The other mechanism is the, the time to click, 
but I like, always like to like, give an example, right? If the the uh, attacker were to send an email to me now, this instance, and then it gets checked and everything is fine, but I'm busy here, right? Uh, maybe tonight, nine o'clock, then I will uh, open my emails and then click on that link. So uh, is that link still good? Well, from now it's about four o'clock to nine o'clock. We have uh, five hours, attackers can do wonders, right? Within that five hours. So a, a good link, a good URL can become a bad URL. So uh, the mechanism that we put in is a you know, kind of click. At the time that you click, then we check it again, right? Uh, because like I said, um, uh, attackers are getting more sophisticated and they've put in uh, all kinds of various uh, mechanisms uh, uh, to, uh, if they really want to breach your network, they will find a way right, to do it. And that could be one of the ways. And, and lastly, business email compromise, right? Uh, how many can, companies here uh, still, or well, not still, uh, are making use of emails, right? To receive POs, uh, maybe HR receiving resumes. I think it's, it's normal, right? So let's say receiving POs or receiving uh, delivery orders, right? Then you can make payments and all that. So what if somebody managed to uh, impersonate that kind of uh, emails coming in? Not that difficult, right? Uh, just take, um, you know, 40 uh, domain, right? Dot com. Uh, not everybody would know, right? 40 dot com. Uh, what if the email comes in with 40net.net? Would a normal user know that this is uh, not the right email address, right? From right? Uh, you, we don't expect usual users to, to know that, right? So business email compromise itself would uh, then put in the, the analysis allows you to then check whether it is it a real domain, uh, is this person trying to impersonate, and then stop the kind of uh, targeted attacks. Right, uh, going on. Okay, so to prevent, uh, 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 well, we call it business email compromise. Uh, and one of the best uh, examples right, I can think of was, uh, I can't remember, I think it was three years ago, probably. Um, uh, one of those Nigeria scam uh, that was well reported, right? Uh, and was kind of uh, uh, discovered or uncovered. Uh, here in uh, ASEAN, uh, Interpol to be exact, together with the uh, 14X uh, bodyguard labs, right? Uh, so we, we managed to uncover that. Uh, and it's exactly using this technique, right? And making, uh, sending emails to unknown, uh, no, unsuspecting, I should say, unsuspecting uh, uh, accounts payable uh, departments, right? That, oh, you, it's, the invoices, right? Then it's time to pay, and these are all fake invoices, right? And and companies were reported to lose millions of dollars because money were paid out uh, due to these um, uh, fake invoices. Okay, so, uh, so what's the efficacy of, of it all, right? I think from uh, the third party test point of view, uh, forty nets in general and forty mil to be specific. Uh, passes many uh, uh, third party tests. As you can see here, we, we gain high marks in, in, in terms of uh, performance uh, across uh, all these third party uh, testers. And um, customers give us good marks as well. Uh, as you can see here, uh, peer insights coming from uh, Gartner. Um, we get rave reviews uh, uh, from a uh, performance and from a uh, efficacy point of view uh, from our customers. Okay, so, so far to, to now, right, we, I've been talking about technology, what 40 uh, mail can do, right? So, but remember I, I mentioned that, uh, I, I mentioned that, techno uh, sorry, security is not just about technology, right? It's also about people and process. So people include, uh, people who operate the technologies, but there are also people who use them. But what, what do I mean? Well, in, in this case, right, for emails, I'm talking about people who are who are the, the, the usual guys making use of your emails, right? So all you need is to have one person to open a file, uh, 
unknowingly, open a, a, a click on the URL uh, unknowingly and your network may be compromised, right? So we need to be able to strengthen this uh, weakest link. Uh, but humans, right? How do we uh, make them aware of it? It's through training. And uh, this is uh, what Fortinet has to offer. Uh, it's in terms of testing your users. Right? We call it FortiFish. So basically it is a cloud-based kind of uh, phishing simulation service, right? Testing your users, right? Are they, you know, finger click happy every email that comes in with a uh, attachment open every email that comes in with a link click on it right so uh, i think as time goes by right with more and more of these simulations people test it and then they realize that hey actually you know you need to be careful i'm not going to be uh, clicking on everything that comes in okay so it is a effective way to um to train your users so as uh, so that they become more discerning and understand that uh, you know they have to be careful. Uh, try to identify whether every email that comes in uh, is suspicious. Uh, maybe consult you before they, they open it. Right? I can vouch that it is uh, it has been very effective. Um, within the company itself, we we make use of this as well. And uh, after one year of training, right, we are all. Uh, well versed in not clicking on those links, right? So uh, something for you to consider. So while uh, we talk about you know moving to the cloud or your email itself giving you the kind of productivity to drive your business, uh, uh, you need to put in that technology piece of thing, right? To uh, uh, protect your email, and then finally uh, build that awareness and vigilance. Right against uh, email bond attacks, right with a uh, um, phishing simulation service such as the Forty Fish, right, so that people and technology right come together to drive and protect uh, your business itself. Okay, so enough, right? I, I I mentioned at the beginning that there's so many things to do, so many different uh, attack surfaces. So how do we then put everything? Or, or chain them all up in a coordinated way to uh, prevent a breach, right? Uh, and uh, during my my sharing on the forty mil, I mentioned also about uh, a sandboxing, right? Forty sandbox itself. So I'm just going to make use of forty sandbox as an example of how coordinated defense can come together to help you uh, protect against uh, uh, persistent threats. Okay. So again, I'll come to come back to this uh, uh, attack framework, right? Uh, it's called Mitre Attack Framework, right? And um, uh, you will see various layers uh, of uh, uh, protection that we can offer uh, from uh, the basics to the very mature uh, kind of security organization. So today, I'm just going to talk about the 40 mil, which I, I mentioned just now. And then the sandbox itself. Just one slide on, on the sandbox, like how you can put things together. Uh, so um, the sandbox itself provides a kind of a, you know a AI based uh, a method for you to you know inspect files, inspect uh, the URLs that are coming in uh, by various methods. Um, of course, running the file, going through the, the, the code behind it, and then um, making use of the AI and the machine learning in the back end, right, to uh, discern whether this file eventually uh, is it a good or a bad. But like I, I, I started off saying, right, it's not going to be a standalone because it's, uh, you, you're not going to have so many technologies and then try to uh, manage all of them at the same time. You will see down here that it is integrated. So uh, Sandbox itself being integrated with uh, the 40GIP, the Next Gen Firewall ST WAN with the uh, email security, the WAP uh, endpoint, right? And then managing it through the SIM itself. So if you put this uh, together, right, then basically we are talking about a uh, automated breach protection system, right? That covers your network uh, through uh, 
next gen firewall and the uh, SD WAN itself, your applications, which in this case is uh, email and uh, web applications, right? And even the endpoints itself, right? So if we, if we take a uh, Take one step back, right? Hey, basically, these are what you, uh, typical organizations would have, right? A network applications and then endpoints, right? And what good are they if they are going to be, you know, in silos, right? Today, they are already connected as one. Security should also be connected as one. And, and uh, at a higher level, we integrate them at the sandbox itself, right? And finally, if uh, like uh, the sandbox will, will do the zero day protection itself, uh, taking uh, your files, taking your URLs and all that to inspect and to give you better efficacy and then feeding back that information to uh, all these various points of uh, attack. Right? So if you were to chain all this up together, you can see that, hey, you know, we started off saying there are so many attack surface, right? The edges. Um, uh, and the types of attacks you got malicious websites malware uh email based kind of attacks web application attacks api attacks with uh the oas top 10 is a uh, very well known right and then endpoint itself uh, also malware vulnerable software etc and uh, where are they coming from right these attacks uh, basically they are coming from the network uh users emails web applications and uh, endpoints again, right, users. So you would be familiar with the uh, prevention methods. And then for Fortinet itself, it will be the 40 gate uh, as a network firewall, 40 proxy as a SWG or a, a proxy, right? 40 mail as uh, for email security, 40 web as a WAF, a web application firewall, and uh, 40 client endpoint security. So you got types of attacks, uh, and attack surface, there's a prevention, but these again are uh, known threats, right? Where you, you operate on signatures and all that. So, for the prevention, but what about unknown threats? Then you do detection at the sandbox level, right? So, uh, imagine you have a single sandbox and then you uh, connect all your various prevention technologies into a single sandbox. So, uh, kind of like a, a central brain, right? You say that, hey, let's say the 40 gate sends something over. It is a uh, uh, bad file, file with malware. Then does the 40 gate only knows about it? No, right? We are saying that that information will get fed into all these other prevention uh, technologies, be it a, uh, SWG, uh, email gateway, your WAF or your endpoints, right? So eventually that track information uh, gets shared across your entire prevention uh, network. Okay, so this is where what we mean by uh, you know a, a broad uh, prevention or broad protection uh, against uh, various attack surfaces, uh, attack methods, uh, integrating them together, right, uh, with the sandbox itself, and then automating your response. Because once uh, a file is known to be malicious, that file information gets automatically. Uh, uh, propagated across your entire uh, uh, prevention surface. Okay, so that provides you with the technology. Uh, but then again, you know, if you look at here, right, itself, we have six different uh, solutions or six different technologies for you to operate and for you to manage. Uh, so when it comes to that, right, you need people and processes uh, to operate them well. And that's where uh, you can do it yourself DIY, or you can engage a MSSP like CD, uh, CPC uh, to operate this and, and run this uh, for you within their SOC. And uh, that's where I would like to hand this time over to John, uh, who will share with you more how CD uh, uh, Telecom CPC makes use of Fortinet solutions to offer you that broad. Uh, security uh, for your entire network. So John, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, hope everyone can see my camera right. Let me share my screen. OK, 
Okay, so thank you, Jenkins, for the introduction of Fortinet's product. And now, my name is John, the Security Product Manager of City Telecom CPC. Just now, Jinping has shared with you the basic information about the Fortinet security product line, like the Fortimail, Forti Sandbox, as well as its great function and the features. Now, as a close partner of Fortinet, I will further share my company, City Telecom CPC, how our SOCs manage service on top of Fortinet's product and give customer a comprehensive and integrated security solution to protect customers' IT environment, especially on the web application and the email security part. And then my presentation will be mainly in two parts. The first, I'd like to recap the basic concept of APT, why it's difficult to detect and uh, prevent. And the second part is how our City Telecom CPC's managed security service solution on top of Fortinet's product and what is our value-added service on top of the product. And first, let us recap the basic concept of APT. And uh, the APT is consists of like the advanced persistent and threat. Unlike the traditional never attacks, yes, three major differences. First is the advanced in combining the different attacking method, not just like the traditional network, uh, the hacker is just like to, to, to hack into your file server or, or to break down your, your firewall. It's uh, uh, just single single method, single way, but as the ABT it combines the different advanced way. And uh, the second is the persistent. It's also the, the most spread way for, for an APT attack. Usually for, for the traditional attack, when the hacker hack just like hack your password, enter a database, stolen your data and uh, and run away. But for the APT, it, like a persistent, the hacker will leverage your vulnerabilities, hack into your, your server without your, 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 your awareness and he can continuously assessing your server and steal the data once he found it, it's valuable, which means he can do every everything or continuously put the malware or, or steal your data without your, your knowing. Right? And the, the third is called the, the threat. And the, for the traditional attack, maybe the coding, once the hacker inject to your computer and the hacker cannot control the code. He just let the malware or let the worm execute it themselves. And uh, even the hacker cannot predict the, the, the result, right? But for the for the ABT, once the hacker inject the malware to your database or to your web server, he can control the exact time to run it, to stop it, and maybe run it different, different times to steal the data if you didn't be aware of it. So that's the, the concept of APT. And uh, the general method, the common ATP type, we often heard like the zero the attack, the SQL injection, the phishing website, the ransomware, especially recently the ransomware screen didn't happen around the world. And uh, also the crypto mining. Uh, and the common APT measures, if you usually through the mobile tablet, like USB media, which has Bigger security protection. So unlike the, the traditional never attack, it just try to break the firewall, break the server. But now as the enterprise, the database server, the firewall usually has a very well protection. But hacker is now focused on the weaker part, like our mobile, our tablet, our US media, which we also connected to the internal network of the company. So in case this part has been breathed through or hacked, the hacker can easily assess the core network or the core database, right? And also the second is the using the social engineering, uh, like as Chimpin mentioned, a fake email, pretend to be a, a close partner, a boss or, or friend, and ask, asking for, for the confidential information. Right? And because those staffs are easily trusted by, by, by persons, so they, they, they may just give their critical information confidential without the, the uh, the verification of, of the identity, okay? And of course, usually there will be a firewall application vulnerability that can be exploited by the, the hacker. And why the APT attack, like the 
the ransomware, the email phishing, crypto mining is difficult to, to detect. People may say that, hey, I have firewall already, I have WAF already, why I cannot detect this type of attack? Because for the methodology, the traditional security network device like the UTM, the NGFW is on a sticking trap base. Like it, it detect a, a guy said, uh, a guy wearing the, uh, wear the white shirt is a good, good guy and the guy wear the black shirt, then it's a, a, a bad guy. It's based on the signature. But the APT attack, usually the, the malware, the threat, they can pretend, they can appear to be a good man. They can also wear a white shirt and do nothing wrong, right? So the UTM cannot detect it when, when he entered the network. But after he entered the network, he started doing something, something wrong. And now he, he, since he already passed the firewall, the firewall was not able to, to detect it. Right. He also pretend as a legitimate resources like a, a friend, a boss from, from email. So it's difficult, difficult for the traditional security device to detect it. OK. And now how our managed security service could help customer on detect the APT attack, especially on, on the email and the web security, which is our focus topic in this webinar. And let's recap our solution on web security first. You can take a look of the solution diagram. Of course, we are all rely on the, the, the 40, 40 nest product line. And the first is our trust CSI UTM service. It's powered by the FortiGate. Of course, the firewall is still ne necessary for every, every customer. The traditional network attacks still need to be prevented. So the, the FortiGate is a must for, for every customers. And after the files or any the, the traffic passing the port gate, as I mentioned, uh, the, the traditional firewall may not able to detect the APT attack. Then uh, another component, the trusted MAS, which we rely on a WAP portal from Fortinet, is called the FortiWeb. And he will detect, further detect the application layers, threat or, or attack. And if any malicious file or suspicious file found it, he may send to a local compliance, a, a local appliance called the 40 cent box. As Chipping just introduced, he can detect the malicious files. And in case if there's like any any file with, with, with ransomware, uh, any suspicious coding will, will be executed after the file open, it can all be blocked by the 40 cent box. And then we will also have a service called the MSS to centralizedly collect all the logs from this different devices, create a lot simultaneously from 40 gate, 40 web, 40 sandbox, and do a correlation analysis, right? It's based on a scene engine. And in case after the correlation analysis, filtering all the false alarm, and if there is indeed a security incident happened to the, to the customer, our SOC will immediately alert customer and sending some uh, advice, uh, recommendation for customer to immediately solve, solve the incident. And of course, as, I, as everybody knows, there's no 100% safe environment, uh, no 100% protection guaranteed. So data backup is also needed. In case you've been hit by the AP attack or ransomware, you can re always restore your data to minimize the, the data loss. So CBC can also provide a cloud backup solution for the customer. Customer can backup their data to our cloud platform with high availability protection as an offsite copy. And the email security solution is similar to the web security. Just one component change is the WAF, the 40 web, is changed to a 40 mail because it's mainly cater the, the email security, but the flow will be, be similar. And the 40 mail will also extend the email the attachment or any link, phishing links, phishing file in the the email and the pass to sandbox for, for further exam. So besides we are selling such solution to customers, it's also worth to mention our CPC company, the entire organization, not only in Singapore, but also the Hong Kong, China, and, and also our Europe entities are all using the 40 mail to protect our internal IT environment. Okay, we are also leveraging on this solution to protect ourselves, right? So we, we do trust this very, very, uh, very good solution mature solution okay and now uh why customers 
choose the CPC as their SOC provider, customer may ask, oh, the solution is based on 14S product, right? And uh, every market player can, like the system integrator, the distributor, they can sell the 14S product. So why I should find CPC to do it and choose the service on top of it? That's because as a MSAP provider with the 14S, just Chimping mentioned, we are, we are a very close partnership with Fortinet and our engineering, our SOC team members, they have a strong technical knowledge and the expertise on the Fortinet product. You can see we have well, many the highest engineering certification of NSC from NSC 5 to NSC 7. And we have been the MS partner with Fortinet for uh, almost 10 years in the global global wide. So in case there is a security incident, we can quickly identify the problems and uh, communicate with the vendor to solve it and uh, make customer the, the less business impact. And uh, beside the Fortinet certifications, CBC also has the, the ISO certification to ensure the operation procedures is fully compliant with the ISO standard. And we also have another expertise in the security field like the CISA, the Japan test that can provide a comprehensive security solution and the service to customer. Okay, that's a high level of our CBC's background on, on security. And the next I will introduce some detailed service of our, how our LLC service do and what we will deliver to customer. The first is the basic is the, the device management now here is the screen capture of our, our SOC our 24 by 7 SOC centers. And the table shows two parts. The first is the basic part of device management. Like when you purchase the hardware from, from 40Net, like the, the 40 ware 40 mail, 40 gauge, we can provide the basic surface like the installation, status monitoring, policy change, on site hardware swapping, device configuration, backup. Of course, this is a basic part, and I believe that the market player like the system integrator, they can also provide. And the most valuable part to customer, I believe, is the, the right part is the security incident management. As I mentioned, we can help you like, config the policies, the alert, and in case there is any alert, we will do the investigation for, for customer. We will analyze the alert and give you a, a recommendation to customer for how to solve it. It's not about hardware management, which on, on top of it, it's all about the security knowledge and experience. Because as a SI or distributor, or they, they may sell you the hardware, ensure the hardware is good. And if the hardware has fault, you will on-site swap for you. But if, if you are asking them how to handle an incident, when the hardware detected, they may not be able to, to give you those advice because they don't have the security analyst, they only have the engineer, okay? So this is what we will deliver the customer. We will investigate the, the incident. We will also have a centralized online portal to show the security status of the, of the environment. And also we have delivered a customer report to customer, the security report. And here is the comparison of our MSP service content and also the SI and uh, maybe customer choose to self-manage. You can see for self-manage mode or the uh, managed by the uh, SI, they will mainly focus on the hardware part, as I mentioned. They will ensure the hardware is, is working normally, but they don't have the capability to respond to a security incident, to quickly identify the cause, whether the alarm is a false alarm or need to pay, pay attention. And if it's a critical incident, how to, how to handle it, and this we also included in our MSP service. Okay, and here is our uh, SOC services deliverable in, in details. First, like I mentioned, besides provide the device management service, we will have a SIM engine to centralize collect a lot for the correlation analysis to tailor made the rule set to fit customer's environment. For example, we will collect the 40 webs log 40 gates log and then they also customer itself web service log for a correlation analysis. In case the 40 web has alarm, 
but the web server is still healthy, we may foresee oh, it's uh, falls apart, no need to pay special attention. That's all correlated because the web server is still running fine, the, the resources is normal. Okay. However, if we detect both the there is a alarm on the faulty web and also the end ending web servers resources is able to exhaust it or or maybe about to, to die, response rate slow, then we may foresee maybe a, a, a DDoS attack because it really caused the impact to, to the web server. You need to make customer aware of it and pay special attention. That's the, the rules we will make for customer. So we found this same service customer only focus on the, like the WAFs alert, they you will have a lot of false alarm and, and make customer exhausted. <laughs> Why, or, or, or what alarm should I pay attention? They may miss the real, real incident. Okay, so that's a value we develop to the customer. And also we have uh, screen incident notification SLA. In case we found that there is a high level security incident, we will notify customer in 15 minutes. And also we have an emergency responsible plan and uh, a recommendation or a sort of we will work out from our experienced security analyst to advise customer how to handle. And it, the last one is we will have a monthly report to summarize all the security incident, like how we how we solved it, what vulnerability was, was being exploited, and how customer can improve it in future to give customer an executive summary, periodically summary the the security incident status as well as the, the future plan. Okay. Here is a high level security incident management workflow of our SOC team. And of course, we will collect the, the log source from different, like the 40 gate, the 40 web, the 40 mail, 40 sandbox, every, every security devices, they will have logs and then will fit to our SOC platforms. And then in case the alarm was triggered, our security engineer will provide a proactive investigation, like the remission plan, the forensic, and the producer detailed report after the, the incident happened. And we will also hold regularly security status review with customers to fine tune the, the use case, fine tune the, the rule set, uh, and uh, give the recommendation for customer to improve. And here is a real example of how we handle the ransomware for customer. Previously, one of our customers in, in Hong Kong was affected by ransomware at uh, some of the uh, IT environment, not all the environment, uh, some of the IT environment were, was done, uh, including some, some of their website. Okay, so, so they contact CPC to trigger our IR services. And uh, we have been work out a detailed sold out to help them Solve things. Of course, we can. We cannot decrypt the data for customer. That, that's for sure, <laughs> because in some way it's impossible to to decrypt uh, data. As long as the only way is you 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 pay the ransom fee to to the hacker, but it's not strongly recommended. But there's no way to to decrypt data. You can only restore it from from the backup. But what the customer concern is is is, is any another environment. What, what how large is our environment being attacked? And for the clean environment, for the environment that is still still working, will there be any potential potential threat there? The most way customers are afraid is once I fix, I restore the data from the affected environment, and after one or two weeks, the, the another environment also exploited it because there is some threat there and we, we, we didn't farm. So they want to do the threat hunting to clean all the threat in their internal environment to ensure it won't happen in the future. For the current data being affected a lot, a lot today, they can restore from there, it's okay. Because they also know it's impossible to decrypt it. Okay, so to, you want to make sure that the future environment is, is clean and safe for them. So that's we provide the, the IR for them. The first we will identify and, and the, the impact is go like you. Have ten subnets and five subnets is, is being attacked, and the virus is, is the ransomware is spread. It, but another five subnet is clean, and we I will immediately isolate those network from the affected one. Okay, and then we will identify the 
the zero patient, the, pa the patient zero, which endpoint or which server is affected first? Because the ransomware can, can from the application layer, can from the OS layer, if there are some critical patch didn't be being applied, okay? And also can from a user that click a malicious links or click a, a file in the, a file with ransomware in the, in the email attachment, okay? Can be many ways to, to, to affect, to be affected by the, by the uh, ransomware. So we need to identify the, the patient zero for customer. And then we will analyze the uh, root cause, the detailed investigation, perform the threat hunting in the remaining clean environment of customer to ensure those vulnerabilities has been, been fixed. Like we found the, the ransomware has come from a web server that has the application vulnerabilities. Uh, all the OS patch is outdated critical vulnerability that's been used by hackers. So we will try to locate if there is any same service with same OS version in your clean environment and we immediately patch for, for the customer to ensure the, the, those vulnerabilities have been, been, been fixed. Okay. And then we will also help customer to reconstruct the data like restore from backup and perform some some verification. Okay, but of course can cannot decrypt or draw that. Right. And uh, after the incident, we will give a detail of the incident report for customers. IT may be present to their director, to their boss to explain the entire uh, incident, uh, maybe help them to defend for themselves. Uh, I mean, it's, it's caused by uh, uh, critical vulnerabilities from which server and we have, I am already fixed it for, and for another environment in the future, maybe the, the chance for happening again will be very low. Uh, we, IT can use this post instant report to defend him, himself, right? And we can we can do this for for customer to customize the report content. Okay. Okay, and here is some some samples of our uh, alert email and uh, also the security report samples. I won't go into too details. If any customer has interest here to to know more or to see the template, you can contact our sales at any time for further discussion. Okay, and uh, we also have uh, MC online portal to, to show customers security incident status and that the ticket has been opened and uh, to locate their, their case details. And uh, here is the summary of our SOS as I introduced just now from the detection alert level and uh, for the response and uh, Mediation level and also the report and summary, we cover all the stages, stages through a security incident. Right? And so if customers leverage the 14S product line and our SOD surface on top of it to manage it to give a comprehensive solution, I believe customers at the environment will be well protected from the network attack, email attacks, or any web application attacks. Okay. So that's all for my part. Thank you for listening, and then we'll pass back to Gamsing.